Yeah, so I'm not really supposed to be here. I was supposed to take a break for the holidays, but I don't know, True Stalker is just too good. I couldn't help but sneak as much playtime as I could. And I saw a lot of people having some issues with some very basic stuff. So I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can very quickly in this video. So we already got a first patch. You can get it on the Epi Pro website and I'm gonna leave some extra links in the video description just in case the servers get saturated again. This patch doesn't change much gameplay-wise, but it's fixing a lot of game-breaking bugs, so you should definitely get it. When it's unloaded, just extract the files, grab the content folder, and just copy it in your main game folder. Just replace the files when you're asked, and that's it. Launch the game, just check that it's the 1.1 version, and you're good to go. If, like me, you install the game in program files, because that was the default path in the installer, don't forget to launch the game as administrator, or you're gonna have some issues saving your games and your settings. And if for some reason your game is not in English when you get started, you go to the second option, the third tab, and then the second on the list is the language. You just apply, and you're good to go. A few moments later... Okay, scratch everything. I was... I just woke up, I was ready to fine-tune the video and publish it, and I just saw that the boys published like <laughs> two new small patches already. It's a lot of small bug fixes, quality of life stuff. The install is exactly the same as what I just showed you for the 1.1, so yeah. You have all the links on AP Pro. Yeah, you just download everything, and then you install patch 1, then you install patch 2 on top of it, and then you install patch 3 on top of it. Install the three patches, like, one after the other. By the way, one of the fixes from the patch is if you killed the military under the bridge in Cordon. You don't have to kill the military. You can just cross Cordon by going through here. You can do it like both ways. And you have another path on the other side of the map too. You don't have to do any fighting with the military early on. I know it's gonna be kinda obvious for a lot of people, but yeah, I, I thought I'd just mention it. Okay, now tools, 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 tools for the technician. So the first set, the basic tools, you can find them in front of the vehicle station where the bandits are in the bus, right there. The advanced tools, you're gonna find them in garbage. Just after the hangar on the way to Agroprom, you just go inside this tunnel. You're gonna have to do some fightings against some bandits and then all the way in the back, in a small room, you're gonna find them. And the last set of tools, the expert tools or calibration tools, you will find them in Dark Valley next to the bandits camp in this container, silo, I don't know how you call it, but yeah, they're here pretty much. Don't quote me on that because I just read it and I didn't try it myself, but apparently you don't necessarily have to bring back the tools to Mikhailich. I mean, if you do so, you're gonna have the quest rewards, but he's gonna be the only one able to do the upgrades for your gear and you have to go back to Cordon all the time to do so. Apparently, you can keep the tools with you and as long as they're in your inventory, you can do the upgrades at any technician. And they're quest items, so they don't wait anything, so it's not an issue to keep them with you. But again, I haven't tried it myself, so yeah, I, if someone can confirm it, that would be nice. Okay, now some random tips in no particular order. It's nothing crazy, but if for some reason you didn't know, it's gonna make your life much easier. In every map generally close to the trader, you're gonna have a personal stash. These are shared stashes, so you can access your loot from anywhere, anytime you want. You cannot miss them, they're marked as a big green box in the map. I was using this stash because that's the one I always use in other mods and it took me like 5-6 hours to realize that there was shared stashes in this mod, so yeah, don't be a dum dumb like me carrying your loot everywhere and just use the personal stashes. You probably noticed already that most traders only buy the weapons in good condition, but this guy in garbage will buy you the stuff that's a little bit more damage. It doesn't give the best prices, but hey, money is money. And it's gonna sound obvious, but explore everything. There's loot hidden everywhere, sometimes in plain sight, sometimes very well hidden, but especially in higher difficulties, you're really, really gonna need this stuff. Always, always make sure that you carry extra batteries with you. I don't know how many times I get carried out doing missions, I end up underground and absolutely fucked because I don't have enough batteries for my flashlight. So again, don't be like me, always carry some extra batteries. And don't forget that you're playing Stalker, so please hunt for artifacts. 
First, you can make good money with them, and some of them are gonna be super useful, especially like the one that gives you extra stamina, because you do a lot of running around, so it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. And like the OG games, artifacts in your inventory do not irradiate you. You don't need containers or anything, so it's fine. As long as they're not in your belt, you can carry as many artifacts as you want on you. And don't wait to have a Veles detector, a nerd suit, and so on to start artifact hunting. Just do it the old school stalker way, naked with some bolts and vodka and a shitty detector. Most of the time it's gonna be fine and you have some base life regen so you can heal easily afterwards. Honestly, the nerd suit is so expensive to repair that, yeah, if it's not for burner anomalies, I just don't use it. Actually, it looks that it's been a little bit more balanced with the latest patch, but yeah, it's still very, very expensive. If you cannot attach a scope or an attachment to a weapon, well, first there was some bugs, they were fixed in the recent patches, so that's one of the reasons to really install them, but it might also be likely that you just didn't do the right upgrade at the technician, so just check it out. And if there's nothing, well, it just means that the weapon cannot have attachments. And if a weapon feels very sluggish and slow to aim, it's the handling stat. You're gonna have to increase that at the technician so the weapon can feel better. With the new patch, you can also completely disable this mechanic through a console command. I mean, it's something we inherited from the old games. I personally don't mind it, but yeah, I know some people really hated it. So now you have a way to fix this. Do not buy armors early in the game. You're gonna have a sunrise suit pretty early with the mission, then in the labs you're gonna find some nerd suit and a freedom suit too. You will even get a heavy armor pretty early in the mission, so yeah. If you really want to buy something, just save your money and buy some big boy item at the guy in garbage. But anything in between is not really worth spending your money, I think. Speaking of the hangar in garbage, there's an underground to it. Sometimes some stashes spawn there and I saw some people very confused because they cannot find them. They're probably underground. So yeah, you just access it here and you just look around in the tunnels. There's also some quest items that you can find here. At the beginning, I was thinking about doing a whole walkthrough of the whole mod, but so far I'm at chapter 6, I haven't finished the mod yet, but I haven't had any issues with the mission, so I don't know if it's really necessary, just let me know if you want me to do one. But honestly, besides so far the mission with the master, that was kind of a pain in the ass. If you get lost in this mission, yeah, you just need to take a right in the tunnel where you reach all the boxes, and then just like, well, break the boxes to reach him, and then then grenade his face or hide in a corner and he's gonna kill himself with the anomalies but beside this mission where I struggled a bit I didn't have any issues so far. There are some bugs here and there of course, sometimes some missions have a hard time triggering but overall if you follow everything in order more or less at least the best you can do you shouldn't have any issues. And remember that the game saves every important step automatically, so you can always go back if you have like any issues triggering a mission, or you did something wrong, or want to try something different, like a different option in a quest, that's always possible. Oh yeah, and Gamzat's cache, where you have to find the documents in his hideout after he dies in the Mutant Overlord mission, is right here. I struggled a little bit to find it, so if you have any issues, here goes nothing. The mutants respawn a lot and very quickly in this mod, you don't have to fight them, just run. <laughs> as long as you don't carry too much with you, and again, if you had some artifacts for stamina, you can avoid most of the fights you don't want to have. And if you feel that the enemies are very bullet spongy and hard to kill, it's because you're not playing in a high difficulty enough. Like, hard difficulty is nice for this, like you get killed very very quickly, but you kill everything very very quickly too. Anyways, I think that's it for now, that's everything I had in mind. If you have other tips, please, please, please share them in the comments and I might do a big compilation with all the good ones later. Okay, see you later guys.